Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Patrick, the King of Cars. Today we're here at Road America up in Wisconsin for the WeatherTech Challenge with Brian Redmond with a incredible amount of classic vintage race cars, including a lot of vintage Ferraris, something I really love. Like, look at these 333 SPs here. Absolutely amazing. We're also here with Mr. Dubow. What's up? In the first ever vlog, I drove up to Wisconsin with Mr. Dubow, and today I've driven up to Wisconsin with Mr. Dubow. So, lovely circularity here, but oh my gosh, look at these incredible cars. Can't wait to share some of these cars here. There are some amazing things here today. It's gonna be a great time today, and I hope you stick around. Just missed a 918 Wysock driving by an electric boat, but there is so much weird stuff here today. Like, check that out. Alpine A310, I think it is. Very interesting. Never seen one of those before. Also saw a Citroen SM drive by as well. Just a very strange, wide variety of cars. And of course, there are vintage race cars everywhere. Of course, a lot of open wheel cars as well. Crazy, crazy stuff. And just look at the view here. You've got the final corner going into the start finish straight as well as the turn four. I think that's turn four. Yeah. Going up into the Corvette Hill. Just crazy stuff. And of course, cars for as long as the eye can see. And then you got 356s down there. You got a Shelby Daytona. Just some crazy, crazy stuff. This is, as the announcer put it earlier, the national park of speed here in America. And it, it really isn't wrong. I mean, Mustangs, Corvettes, Porsche, more Porsche, like everywhere, right around the track. Really crazy stuff. Listen to this 360 Challenge car. It sounds absolutely insane. sound of open wheel race cars echo through the hills. Very random, Mosler MT900S. You might know this car if you play Forza, and Horizon 4 was one of the fastest, but this thing is really interesting. I've never seen one of these before. American supercar based on the race car. Chevy engine, I think, makes quite a bit of horsepower, but oh my gosh, you got Corvette taillights. This thing is just insane, and it's been brought by Ferrari Lake Force. They brought some amazing other cars. Look at that Corvette there. 512 BBI, nice Roma, 365 GTC4, and a Vantage. But this thing is super cool. Never seen one of these before. I don't know how many of these are made. I'll put this up on the screen if I can find something on Google like I usually do. But man, this is cool. Over by the Ferrari Lake Forest section, there's a blue Potsy Ferrari Daytona, which is really nice, along with a 458, a 348, a 812, and a 355. I'm sure this lot will fill up more as the day continues. It's really cool to see that Daytona. Here's something interesting. This is a 1968 Helmet TX, a race car with a jet turbine, which is really freaking cool. Jay Leno featured this on his YouTube channel. So if you want to learn more about it, go there. I don't need to tell you where to find Jay Leno, but look at this thing. This is absolutely insane. One of only four in the world. This is the only one in North America. I've never seen one of these cars before and I didn't know what it was up until about a minute ago, but this thing is so, so cool. Very nice GT3R. Lots of GT cars driving by now, like this 458 Challenge. R8 LMS just went by as well, but this sounds absolutely unreal. And of course the Mustang Trans Am completely interrupting me, very rude. Yeah, me too. R34 GTR, race car obviously. You truly never know what you're gonna see at Vintage Weekend. And right now I am looking at a car that definitely is no exception and needs no introduction. But I'm gonna introduce it anyway. This is a McLaren F1 GTR, chassis number 17R, driven by Nelson PK. This thing is absolutely unreal. I mean, not my first time seeing an F1 GTR out in the open, but certainly my first time seeing an F1 GTR not being surrounded by people, and also on a summer day. More on that story another time though, because look at this beautiful red, white, and blue livery. It is still July, so I guess that's still very much of the current time, but gosh, this car is so unbelievably cool. Center seating position, just like a Formula One car, BMW V12. Oh my goodness, just one of the most legendary cars of all time. And the values certainly reflect that. I imagine this car being worth well over $30 million. Absolutely insane. Beautiful Ferrari 330 as well, but nobody's paying attention to that because of the F1. Hi, Andy. Here's a Porsche that I know literally nothing about. 
but it's pretty crazy. Very nice. Here we have a real GT40 Roadster, which is red, so it must be a Ferrari. Jokes aside though, this is an absolutely incredible race car. I mean, very, very prolific era of racing, especially in the Ford versus Ferrari. And this being part of it, the Roadster version was Ford's answer to the Ferrari P3. And it's just cool. This thing, did, this one in particular, didn't race in too many races, but it's still extremely cool and of course extremely rare as well. Here we are in the presence of an absolute legend, arguably even more of a legend than the F1 GTR. This is the Porsche 962, Porsche's Group C race car from the 80s and 90s. Oh my gosh, it's just insane from all angles. The aero is just nuts. I don't know anything about this particular car, but my goodness, it is absolutely insane. Another real GT40, this time being lowered out of the WeatherTech trailer. Absolutely insane right here. It's a Mark I. This is the very last Ford GT ever produced, as told by a very familiar face on the channel. I think that's correct, anyways. Yeah. Getting out of the way here. Love these cars. Never gets old seeing them, especially when they are the real deal. Also at the WeatherTech booth, we have this beautiful 991-911 RSR. We have the, the biggest car in the world in the form of the BMW M8 GTE. And then we have a Dodge Daytona. On the other side, some classic Porsches as Max is very much enjoying right now. A Ford Lotus Cortina and the aforementioned GT40. As well as a Bentley blower being unloaded from the trailer. Truly incredible stuff. And here's the main headline of the event where I did my intro. The classic Ferrari sponsored by Mecham Auctions. Just a bunch of crazy, crazy stuff. I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of classic Ferrari, starting off with the 1953 166mm. Just an iconic car. 250 GT Buono. The GT TDF. Very, very cool. Drogo Body 250 GT, which is actually down there. 250 GT Long Wheelbase Spider. Very, very cool. A 212 export, so a little bit older. This one's from 1951. A 250 short wheelbase Berlinetta. Just one of the most beautiful, most gorgeous cars of all time. One of my first time seeing one out and about. So that is insane. Moving along, I mean, just icons for as far as the eye can see. I mean, every single car in this booth is worth at least millions and millions of dollars like a 400 Super America Series 2. One of my personal favorites of all time. I think this is the most beautiful front engine car, the 275 GTB. This particular one is a 6C alloy Berlinetta, so it's got the alloy wheels, it's lighter, it's more visceral. Think of it as an 812 comp, but built in 1966. A 250 GT Lusso, very, very, very pretty. A 1955 Ferrari 410S. This was actually the top most expensive selling car at auction in Monterey last year. Sold for an absolutely exorbitant amount of money. So it's really, really cool to see that. Just a huge crowd here. Here's a 250 Testarossa. I mean, one of the most iconic Ferraris of all time. And then on top of that, the Drogo Body 250 GT. Absolutely insane. A 308 GTD4 by Michelotto. This looks like a 288 GTO, but it's actually a 308 race car. Very, very cool. Another GT TDF. But then we come into the really, really insane stuff. The 512F. This thing was built to rival the Porsche 917. Obviously, it didn't win, but my goodness, this thing is beautiful. Five liter V12, as per the regulations at the time. Moving around here, I mean, just look at this thing. I think the prototypes from this era are absolutely gorgeous, and this car is no exception. And then, speaking of prototypes, we have two Ferrari 333 SPs. Absolutely unreal. We've got a race car. A lot of noise there. We've got a race car and a customer car. And the way you can tell the difference between the two is that the race car has these vents on the side, whereas the customer cars don't. This one's a 96, this one's a 99. They both make so much noise. Similar sort of engine to the F1 cars of the time. And of course the Ferrari F50, one of my favorite cars of all time. Maybe we'll get to see these things running out later today would be absolutely unreal if we did. Continuing on with the vintage Ferraris, here is a Ferrari Dino and Viola Dino. Absolutely gorgeous color, purple over tan. What a car, very fitting of the Dino name. 
Beautiful DB5 right here. Holy moly, that's amazing. We've moved over to turn six, which is a very, very lovely scenic spot under the Corvette bridge here. And looks like there's some cars coming. These Can-Am cars are truly, truly insane. Just lovely, lovely V8 noises. Not that one. Made it a little late to the Ferrari showcase, but check out the 333s. Here comes the customer car, the 99. Oh my god! That's the most exotic car ever And the 512M. When are, you, when are you adding one to your collection? Uh, tomorrow, actually. I just bought one. Cool. <laughs> That's it for the Ferrari showcase. Absolutely incredible seeing hundreds of millions of dollars worth of Ferraris that we saw earlier in the tent. Now on track, making a lot of noise. Just incredible. I mean, there's the 250TR down there. Just incredible scenes, absolutely incredible stuff. Only a vintage weekend. The Trans Am race is about to start, but check this out. A BMW 3 liter CSL, nicknamed the Batmobile. This is the original incarnation of the M livery that we come to know and love today. It's not an M car because that was the M1. That was the first M car, but this is so cool. My first time ever seeing a race car in the flesh. My goodness, this thing's insane. Can't wait to watch these things ripping around the track. Nothing like taking a walk through the woods and hearing cars like these! Upon seeing these T-38s, we all went back to turn eight to go look at some of the racing, and my goodness, it was fantastic. Here are some of my favorite classes that we saw. And the F1 cars, holy moly. And of course there are more of them. GT cars, these Trans Am Mustangs sound insane, and look at that Corvette, absolutely beautiful. Watching the prototypes go by, but we're gonna hop in the car, as we already have done, and go look at more cars. That's the plan. Speak for yourselves. Here we have a prototype being suspended by a tow truck. Since it's light enough, obviously you can do that, but very interesting, not something you see every day. Here's a closer look at the Morgan under the skin. Absolutely incredible. I mean, I think that's a BMW V8. I could be wrong. 
but my goodness, this thing is so cool. Didn't expect to see one of these today or ever because for a very short time, Morgan tried racing at Le Mans and at a bunch of other events, but obviously it flopped because they don't do it now. It's such an interesting race car. It's a convertible Morgan, which is supposed to be a very posh British two-seater sports car built into a race car. Very, very interesting here. And it's really cool to see. And it was going really fast, passing a lot of cars on track earlier. Even cooler. Typical Road America moment when you're walking through the paddock and you just find this, a Ferrari 275 GTS, just completely tucked away. This thing is gorgeous. One of the most beautiful cars of all time. And amongst the Ferraris here today, that is a very, very good statement for this car. Black interior, it looks almost perfect. I don't want to touch this car just because it looks amazing. I mean, look at that rear end. My goodness, this thing is just beautiful, as is the case with all old Ferraris, as you've seen in today's video. About to head out, but wanted to take one last look at the Ferraris. I mean, all these cars are just, well, they're rolling pieces of art. And to see them all on track today, it's absolutely insane. Speaking of which, cars are still out on track, but sun is starting to set and we have a three hour drive back to Chicagoland. So figured take one last look at these beautiful cars before we hit the road. I think my favorite here is either the 250 short wheelbase or this 512. Absolutely gorgeous cars. Also something interesting on the building where I'm about to go to the bathroom, ads for race cars. Road America things, people. Road America things. I mean, look at that. Wanna buy a NASCAR race winner? That, that, that's where you go, right there. Goodness me. Heading to town real quick for their Concours event, but look at this 911 on Aruba plates. Arubian? Sure, Patrick, Arubian. Arubian plates, I'm gonna say that. It's not Arubish, it can't be that. Arubic plates. Arubic. And there's the last GT40, just on the streets. Casual stuff. Once again, as the, is the case with this trip, very wide variety in cars, including a replica Type 57 Atlantic Bugatti. Very interesting. And, well, lots of other cars all over the place. We're only taking a quick stop here, but it's still really cool. At least he's honest. Here's a very beautiful Alpina BMW Z8. Now I'm not actually a fan of the Alpina version because they put in the engine from the 7 Series as well as the automatic transmission. Kind of defeats the purpose of the car, but my gosh, it's still gorgeous. And here we have a Ferrari F40. Looks like an LM, but it isn't. It's built to LM spec, so it's got all the right body panels, the right wheels. Looks really cool and really convincing as well. But my goodness, this is just cool. I mean, you got the iconic LM wing, the fixed headlights, the OZ wheels, not original to the LM, but still really cool nonetheless. In the interior, got the Momo seats, the Sabelt harnesses, just a very bare bones car, but that's what the F40 was as a road car and as a race car as well. Very, very cool car. Looking back here, F40 LM on the Wisconsin Road America plate. Very nice, even though it's not a real LM, it still looks really cool. Now we saw a Morgan race car earlier, and well, this is an original one, three wheels, made completely out of wood. When everybody jokes about Morgans being made out of wood, this is what they joke about. And now I kind of understand. Started at 100 pounds or 110 if you had a water-cooled engine. Very interesting. I personally would pay 120. Just got home from Road America and what is there to say? I mean, just the most incredible cars in the world. Some of the most historic, most well-renowned race cars all in one place and some of which were on track some of which were driven to hell and it was just so cool to see i mean it's just an event that i recommend to anybody the vintage weekend i've been wanting to do it for years finally ticked that box and i don't regret it one bit it is truly one of the most incredible events in the midwest I highly highly recommend also thank you all for 200 subscribers i haven't thanked you all yet haven't had a video to put out but thank you all so much for the support on the channel. It truly means the world to me. Again, I've said it before, in the grandscape of YouTube, 200 doesn't sound like a big number, but to somebody who's just trying to start a channel, trying to grow, it's just incredible to watch just the support from you guys. So thank you so much. But remember, 
If you like this video and you like the cars that you see, remember to like, subscribe, comment, share, you know, all the normal stuff. Comment below, which car was your favorite? Me personally, I love that 512M, but I also love the F1 GTR and the 333 SP and the 962. I just love all the cars that featured in today's video. But until next time, guys, this is me, Patrick, the king of cars. Thank you for watching. Take care.